All right, so if you are looking to pitch your music to pretty much anyone on earth, whether it's a venue or a booking agent or a press outlet or your friend's mom, you're probably going to need an EPK. Now, if acronyms freak you out, don't worry. It's actually super simple to put together an EPK. In this video, I'm going to walk through the eight things that you need, and by the end of it, you'll be all ready to go to pitch your music and hopefully get results and get responses. So without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, if you want this checklist in document form, which I think is easier personally, I'm putting a link in the description below and you'll see at twostorymelody.com we have this checklist that you can download and just have it for easy access as you're putting together your EPK. And then linked inside of that, I also have templates for writing your press release and your artist bio and your artist brief, all of which are components of your EPK that we'll get into quickly. But basically, I think you'll be able to get everything you need to actually write an effective EPK and put it all together from these resources. So hit the link below in the bio if you want those. Okay, so first things first, what is an EPK and why does it matter? Well, an EPK is an electronic press kit. That's what the acronym stands for. And the reason why it matters is kind of in the name itself. It's a press kit, which is basically a place, a list of resources, a collection of resources that people who make press about music can use to make the press about your music. I mean, put a simpler way, it's the hub where somebody who's covering your music can go to find everything they need to cover it. An EPK should really do two things. Number one, it should tell your story as an artist and it should make you look good while doing it. And number two, it should give the press person everything that they need to do their job as easily as possible. Basically, an EPK's job is to remove friction for the press person. Okay, so here's what's included in an EPK. First of all, there are usually three written components. You have typically a press release, which is about, it's a short description of your newest song or your newest project, usually 300 to 500 words, and putting it just in the context of what you're doing now. And it usually describes the song, usually describes who you are as an artist a little bit, and it's very, it's like journalism, it's written in a journalistic tone, it's not supposed to be fluffy at all. That's your press release. Then you also have your artist bio. So the press release is like about your latest project. Your artist bio is about you as an artist. It tells kind of the, uh, the outline of your story and any of your biggest kind of credentials, any of your biggest points of social proof, streaming numbers, other notable pieces of press, any accomplishments you have. And then some EPKs also have an artist brief. And that's kind of like if your artist bio is the song about your artistry, the artist brief is the hook. It's usually just a couple sentences that kind of encapsulate the most exciting things about you as an artist. So those are the three written pieces of an EPK. And again, I have a template at the link below that'll help you to write all three of these pieces. Now, probably the most important thing that an EPK includes is a link to your actual music. So it should certainly feature a link to the project that you're promoting or pitching. And then often it'll feature links to your catalog of music, but it should basically be as easy as possible to listen to your music for the press people. Usually people will use a link to a streaming service that is not like user exclusive. So SoundCloud is a great one for this. Um, Discogs is a great one for this. Um, YouTube links are great for this. Basically a link where the curator can click the link and they won't have to go through any kind of wall or anything. They can just hear the song. They don't have to have an account on the platform. Again, the point is to remove friction from these people hearing your music and covering it. You also want your contact info in your EPK. So if you're using a professional PR firm, usually they will include their own contact info in the EPK. If you are an artist doing your own PR, your own press, then you'll include your own contact information in your EPK. I also recommend that you include links to your social profiles in your EPK, especially the profiles that you most want featured in coverage about your work. So if you're really working on your TikTok, your Instagram, or whatever profile it is, definitely include those profiles in your EPK. I also like it when artists include links to previous press coverage in their EPKs. First of all, it's just a point of social proof, so I get the other people writing about it. And then second of all, it just kind of helps me to get a feel for the artist's story in my head as I'm writing my own piece about them. And then last but not least, you also want photos in your EPK. So you want the cover art to the album or whatever record you're promoting, you're pitching. And then you also want artist photos, so photos of you or your band. And make sure that you have both a portrait and a landscape orientation for these photos. So don't just have a square, don't just have a portrait orientation or landscape orientation. Give the curators a range of options, so whatever format they're working in, they'll be able to easily cover your music. 
And just a side note on this between you and me, if you have not gotten professional photos taken of yourself as an artist or as a band, I definitely recommend doing that. There's a big difference between like a weird iPhone angle photo that your friend took of you or you like a selfie or something that you took of yourself and somebody taking a legitimately artistic photo of you. It looks way better when you have that legitimately artistic photo. And oftentimes the photo is the first impression that these people see of your music. So just take nice photos. It's nice. So that's all you need in your EPK are those eight elements. Now, the other question I get is how should these be packaged together? Like what's the format for, you know, actually sending them to somebody? And what I like and actually what I use is Google Docs. I literally just put all these things in a Google Doc and I will send it as like a view link. And that works great. Professional, I run a professional PR firm and that is the method that I use for putting together EPKs. I also run a music blog and receive like hundreds of submissions a week. And that is a commonly accepted method of sending EPKs. There are also plenty of sites, some free, that will allow you to put together like a landing page. That's fine, and that, that can be nice. If you have a website, you can have a page where your EPK is on it, uh, but that's not even necessary. You can just use a Google Doc. The main thing, again, is to remove as much friction as you can from these curators' processes as you're pitching them your music. So that's how you make an EPK. Really not that hard, really not that complex, uh, but it is essential to remove the friction for curators and give you the best chance at successfully pitching people your music. So here's wishing you good luck, and I hope that video was helpful.